Hello and welcome. You're watching Agronomy and Economy. I am Ryan Beal. And I'm Levi Helmuth. I'm an NDSU Area Extension Specialist in Cropping Systems. I'm an instructor with the North Dakota Farm Business Management Program, employee of BSC. And today is January 29th, 2016. All right, why don't we cut right into the market? Right into the market, starting off with the crops. Uh, for the month of January 2016, regional uh, cash spot prices for crop commodities, hard red spring wheat is 438, hard red winter at 364, Durham uh, average is 615, it's either 6 or 625, depending on where you go. Uh, corn is 6295 is the average. You can get 310, 311 here towards the end of the month, depending on where you're at. Uh, canola is $13.15 and oil sunflowers are at $13.92. Uh, on the board, as far as some of the stuff to watch in the future for corn, uh, for crops, with uh, hard red spring wheat, uh, watch the Black Sea region. Uh, there's a possibility of cold snaps and freezing that's gone on um, throughout the Black Sea, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, the big question is, ha is the damage widespread enough or the damage intense enough in those spots that um, it can't be offset by areas that aren't damaged. I mean, there's it's a little spotty, and so there's always a question of is it actually going to have big enough ramification on the market? Uh, Five dollars is kind of resistance level for spring wheat on MGX that we're seeing, and it really doesn't want to break through that level. So we're going to need some sort of news to kind of shock it a little bit to get up above that level. Uh, corn March futures are trading between 365 and 370. Uh, as we enter February, look for the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, that's when the uh, we'll kind of have a better idea about that uh, South American, uh, Brazilian crop and what's going on down there and how that affects us up north. Uh, well, wrapping up crops, moving to livestock. Uh, average regional steer price, uh, 400 weights. We're trading at 210. 500 weights, 193. 600 weights, 174. And 700 weights, 161. Uh, throughout the month of January, we've also had a lot of regional breeding sales. Uh, regional bread stock, uh, bread heifers, we're trading at 1,400. Stock, just good stock cattle. Three-year-olds are going to be a little, three and four are going to be higher than the four, five and six, but average altogether, uh, 2,100. Uh, solid cows, uh, that's kind of your older cows. Uh, they just have all their teeth. Uh, January 1,400. And short-term cattle, uh, we're at a, trading at 11. Uh, live cattle, the USDA five area average for live cattle for the month of January was a buck thirty-three, and dress carcasses for steers are going at two oh nine. Uh, watching the futures for live cattle futures in April, uh, we're bottomed out last week, kind of at that one twenty-eight, uh, and currently trading at one thirty-five, and we're trending higher. Uh, how high we could go earlier this month, we kind of topped out at a buck thirty-eight. So I, I'm thinking we're going to be in between that one thirty-five to one thirty-seven range as we enter, uh, as we move forward. Uh, feeder cattle futures, March cat, March feeders are trading steady to higher at a buck fifty-eight to a buck sixty. In the last few days they've really been trending and tightening to that one sixty level. Uh, so that wraps up the markets. Uh, last week, or last episode, we talked about uh, planning and the importance of goal setting and planning and for on your operation. So this week uh, in the crop section we're going to talk about planning and looking at uh, op maximum yield versus maximum economic yield. So I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. Definitely. And yeah, maximum economic yield is um, controlling your production costs and improving profitability. Um, Dr. Ed Vasey was a NDSU soil scientist a while ago and he defined MUI as uh, the level of production which results in the most efficient cost of production per bushel and the highest net profit. So you have yield potential which is determined by the cultivar you choose for um, crops, um, what type of variety, um, the weather that you have, the light, the temperature, the um, growing degree days. And then you have uh, what you actually end up getting which can be limited by the type amount of water you get, uh, poor fertility levels, um, insects, weeds and other pests that can lower your yields. And so there's that yield gap, and to get to increase that yield gap to get towards the yield potential, you have to put some inputs down. And sometimes those inputs aren't always cost effective, and depending on how you manage those inputs. Um, I guess a good um, example would be aphids um, and soybean. So you have economic threshold. Um, you don't want to apply herbic or insecticide before those aphids reach that level, or else you might not really 
be worth spraying. You know, you might lose some of those beneficial insects that would end up lowering that population and you might end up getting a second round of aphids. Yeah, uh, with that yield gap, what you're looking at is what your farm yield is. And then uh, to increase the mar on the margin, your marginal cost, to, in to y bridge that gap, let's say one bushel, what are my inputs to generate that one bushel? And is it economically advantageous to try and bridge that gap? Or how far up that gap is it economically advantageous for me to Definitely. bridge that? And you can't just be thinking the short term as well. You've got to be thinking about long term. They're going to cost you money in the long term. Um, if you're mining your soil, you might end up having to co costing you more in fertilizer down the road. That, yeah, as we entered uh, 2016 here with fertilizer being over, well over 500 bucks a ton, that's, guys are looking for ways to cut costs on the farm and the operating budgets. And that's one area, maybe you're going to see some short-term benefit in the cost savings with uh, kind of mining those nutrients out of the soil. We need to be aware of the long-term ramifications to soil health that that can have. And that's going to affect, that's important because that's going to affect that soil health. Long-term is going to affect your 5 to 10 year yield and return, economic returns. Definitely. And management of uh, your soil is very important. You don't want to lose that organic matter, whether it's through wind erosion or... Um, just water kind of pushing off. Uh, if, if you're going to have, um, hopefully we won't have the situation, but if there's no plant in the spring, get something out there to kind of cover your soil, I guess. So I think that's all we have for you today. Um, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by.